Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to Winning Words for Today. My name is Dr. D. Tucker, and I will definitely be giving you words to win by because we have a special show for you today, or special program, I should say, for you today. We will be interviewing one of my best buddies. His name is Lawrence Adams. We call him Larry. Now, before I uh, do an introduction on Larry, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you and praise you for this beautiful day. God, we just ask, Father, that as the very words that go forth out of Larry's mouth, Father God, that you would anoint him with a special anointing, Father God, that souls would be saved, healed, delivered, and set free. God, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, let me tell you a little bit about uh, Lawrence who we call Larry. Uh, me and my guest today, we go back more than 25 years. We were both serving in the church at New Covenant non-denominational church in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where Bishop Milton C. Granham is the senior pastor. I got to say, though, through Pastor Granham, through Bishop Granham, it's where I begin to soar like an eagle from the very words that he spoke into not only my lives, but the lives of many. Amen. Amen. And it's where I learned how to pray and personally fly like an eagle. Amen. Amen. Spiritually, by, by the way. Um, my guest served on several ministries uh, at New Covenant, always working with the less fortunate, always working with the less for fortunate. Bishop Granham saw Larry's heart and the anointing on his life and created the addiction and crisis ministry where he, Larry, was the specialist there. I want to stop here because Bishop Branham had a special calling on his life for raising up pastors, evangelists, uh, teachers, and preachers, amen, and sending them out into the vineyard, amen. God anointed the, the man of God very special for him to do that. Amen. And I appreciate him so much. And I know Larry's going to talk about him just a little bit. Amen. Uh, because we were both under this gentleman that God sent to us. Amen. My yeah. guest was one of many who began a Christian based 12 step program and assisted in developing, developing the 2006 National Recovery Conference. He assisted in developing that conference there. He also assisted in the development and the production of the Crying State, Crying Streets, I'm sorry. That was a documentary that was shown um, at the African American Arts Museum. Additionally, he participated in the Barbershop documentary for Neighborhood United Against this Addictions or I'm sorry, Neighborhood United Against Drugs. I got that right, right, Larry? Yeah, now, yeah, that's it, NUAD. Pardon? NUAD, yep, Neighborhood United Against Drugs. As a professional, this gentleman worked as a job developer, a community relations liaison, an overnight chaplain, a drug and alcohol counselor, a psychiatric tech aide. He is a graduate of Rittenhouse Academy High and Community College of Philadelphia, my alma mater. At Community College, he specialized in behavioral health, human services. Or was that behavioral health and human services, Larry? Yes, yes. Yeah, His heart, again, is always and has always been for the less fortunate. This awesome man of God is married to his beautiful wife, Marcia. They have three children and five grandchildren, a young grand, young grandma and grandpa. Amen. His Amen. Life was Amen. Always, Amen. Amen. His life is not always peachy as it is today. He has a past in which God covered him, protected him, called him out, delivered him, raised him up, trained him, filled him with the spirit and to become the man he is today. I want to introduce to you all my friend, amen, and yours, 
Lawrence Larry Adams. Larry, welcome to Winning Words for the Day. How Hi. are you today, my friend? I'm great. I'm so happy to be here, Dr. D. That was a marvelous introduction, by the way. Oh, I'm not finished. I got more for I you. I've done a lot. I you got more for you because I want to lead into the uh, healing ministry. Amen? Yes. And I just want you to say a couple of words in regards to uh, the past, the, the bishop. Oh, man. Bishop Granham is my mentor. Um, I've been a member of New Covenant Church since 1994. Um Matter of fact, Bishop Granham is the founding pastor, but now uh, Pastor Bob Oliver, he's the uh, executive pastor. So he's, you know, preaching and teaching right now. Uh, matter of fact, Bishop Granham did teach last week, though. It was awesome. It was awesome. I know it was. Mighty man of was. God. He is a the mighty very thing I miss about Philadelphia, Pennsylvania is New Covenant Church. Yes, yes. That's the very thing I miss. Yes. Amen. Now, Larry, I understand you have a you have had a number of near death experiences as far back as you were twelve years old. Yes. You almost uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. And now, is is that around the time you began using drugs at twelve? No. Um. Actually, I began using drugs around fourteen. Because uh, I had abandon, I, uh, I had abandonment issues um, from my father leaving, so I just started looking for love in all the wrong places. I went to the street, uh -huh. you know. And well, by the age of eighteen, I read that you were on crack cocaine, and since yeah. then, I understand you have been shot, shot at, stuck up, beaten with bats and pipes, stabbed in the back, robbed. When I found this on the internet, I'm like, oh my god. You even had a contract out on your life? Yes. Yeah. And at the age of 21, you were sleeping out on the street, homeless, yes. until you were about 23 years old. So I'm about 23. Yeah. Well, well, actually, I was in a shelter. And then I got kicked out of the shelter for smoking cigarettes. And then I began to sleep in the street and in the subways, Love Park, places like that. And so my mother did finally take me back in. Um temporarily with my wife now marcia and and our daughter you know you but up to that women. time i was out in the street you definitely got special women in your life now god yeah. spared you in those dark days during your addiction amen and now amen. there are so many twists and turns in your life and we got to get you back to tell of those dark days and how yeah. jesus delivered you from there i know you know him as a deliverer yeah but you also know him as a healer. a healer and that is what i want to talk about today how god as a healer delivered you he said he sent his word to heal us and to deliver us from all infirmities and yeah. jesus is the word now you know that and he yeah. is our healer today amen and amen. he is no respectful person what he amen. did for one of his children he'll do for all all we got to do is ask and stay on That's our knees it. and ask until we get that yes. Amen. That's it. Amen. We are going to now I found that, that to be the truth. Amen. How God touched you, amen, and healed your body, not once in the hospital, but twice. Now let's talk about your hospital stay in 2015 when you had an operation and then an upper GI. Okay. Okay. So what, what happened? What did you go in the hospital for? What, what kind okay. of complications were you having in your body? Okay, so, so um, like you did mention about the drugs and everything. So after God delivered me from drugs in 1989, um, food became my drug. So I just transferred one addiction for another. You know, um, I wind up uh, just eating myself silly. Um, my highest weight was 379 pounds. Um, I had diabetes cholesterol, high blood pressure, sleep apnea. Um, I was on a sleep apnea machine. Uh, I was on so many medications. I was taking insulin, everything, right? And I was uh, going to a nephrologist for my kidneys, right? My, uh, I was like in stage three kidney failure. So my doctor said, Larry, listen, you're going to have to do, make some drastic changes, right? Or you're going to die. Because, I mean, it was terrible. I mean, they couldn't get my blood pressure under control. And I was just a walking, ticking time bomb. 
And it's not like that I didn't try, did not try to get my health together. I mean, I would change my diet. I would exercise. I would lose 20 pounds. I would gain back 40 pounds. I would lose 40 pounds. I would gain back 60 pounds. So I, so I never was really consistent with it. I was always on a diet and not a lifestyle change, which I finally found out it's all about a lifestyle change. Yeah. So um, my drastic decision was because I just kept getting sicker, making myself sicker and sicker. So I decided to do the gastric bypass, right? Um, actually, I wanted to do the sleeve, but the doctor said, if you do the gastric bypass, then you'll have a chance of not going back on insulin again. So I chose that. And so April 20th. Uh, Mary, brother, what's this other thing you mentioned, the sleeve? Yeah, it's like a sleeve. It's like a different operation. It's, it's, it's not as extensive as the gastric bypass, you know, but with the sleeve, it's easier to gain weight back. And with the sleeve, it's not a guarantee that you can come off of diabetic medicine, which, which I've been off since the operation. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Amen. So um, I decided to do the gastric bypass. I was cleared and everything. Uh, my date to go in the hospital was April the 20th, 2015. I went in the hospital on April 20th, 2015, and I woke up May the 20, May the 18th, uh, 2015. And I was strapped, I was strapped, it was like 28 days. I was strapped to this bed. When I woke up, I was strapped down. I had tubes down my throat. I was on a ventilator. And I had tubes in my neck, tubes in my groin, stitched behind my ear. I was on this machine called the ECMO machine. And it's like the last stages. Um, matter of fact, they're using the ECMO machine right now for um, COVID patients. And they turn you upside down and they put you on this thing. It's like it, 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 it oxidizes your blood. It, 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 um, it cleans your lungs. And then it's a point where it can actually work as your lungs so so this is a high power machine so i was on this thing and i came out and i heard the doctors talking about putting a trach in my throat and then they were saying well let's try to pull the you know the ventilator out i mean the tube out um and see if he could breathe on his own because i guess they did try it before and i wasn't breathing on my own so they pulled it out and i was breathing at 98 percent so I, in my mind, even though I couldn't clap my hands because I'm strapped down, I'm like, in my mind, I'm just like, thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. Where am I at? I, I, I mean, it was like, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was happening. You know, um, I couldn't talk for a period of time. I tried to communicate. I couldn't even write. One time they gave me a pen and a, a, a piece of paper, and I was so happy that I could communicate and my hand, I mean, I was so weak, my hand just slid off the paper. And it was, it was like a nightmare. It was a night, like a nightmare what I went through. I stayed like two months in the hospital. But once I came back, I had to learn how to walk again. I remember my arm was locked. It, it was like my joints were fused together because they weren't rotating me and moving me like I was supposed to be in that bed. So I had to learn how to walk all over again. Um, I still couldn't eat for a month after I came home. So it was like, it, oh my goodness, it was, a, it, it was a serious situation. You know, I was having nightmares all the time when I was in the coma. But when I came out, um, I lost over 100 pounds. Uh, my health started getting better. I was off the insulin. I was off the high blood pressure. Well, not off of it, but they dropped it significantly. I was off of cholesterol and, you know, like five different medicines I came off. I was on nine medicines. I came off of five of them. Praise um, God. Uh -huh. But then what happened was I gained like, I gained 40 to 50 more pounds back, wow. you know, after that. And uh -huh. I was slowly climbing back up to 300 pounds, you know, and um, by this time, my kidneys had failed because remember I was in stage uh, three, but then I finally went into stage five. But check this out. When I came out of the hospital and I went to see the nephrologist, he was like, man, I don't know why your kidneys didn't fail while you were on that ECMO machine. Like, wow. And, you know, a lot of people were telling me that they didn't even know people that came off of the ECMO machine. 
and 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 really because yeah it's it's, wow. it's it's serious it's a serious machine it's like you really have to be sick sick to be on this machine so i mean only by the grace of god i came off of that thing you know he restored yeah. my life and my health so um i'm now was on dialysis which um i was going every three day well every other day three times a week and for four and a half hours, you know, and, and how that was. Long were you on dialysis? I was on dialysis two plus years, two plus years. I was on that. So then that leads you to an elevator event. Yes. Yeah, so um, actually, I was working at the shelter, okay. right? And I met one day. I'm going to go get on the elevator, and the elevator was shut down. It was a man working on it. And we started talking and having conversation. And I asked him, um, right about that time, it was winter time. So I just looked for coat donations and winter apparel donations from everybody. I asked him, did he have any coats um, at his house that he didn't need anymore, that he wanted to donate? And that just led to a friendship. He said, matter of fact, oh, what I'm- So when you, was asking him, when you were asking him for the coats, was that for you or for the mission? Yeah, for the mission, because around that time, that's when I collect coats, like around this time. So I was collecting coats and stuff from people that were in the shelter. I was collecting them from the church. I was collecting them from different individuals because I would also see people on the street that needed coats. So I would, you know, ride up, give them a coat or whatever. And um, me and him became friends. So every year after that, he would contact me and we stayed in touch and he would give me coats you know, we would meet up. So this, um, so one day I was having some electrical problems and I knew he was a master electrician. Mm -hmm. So I called him up, right? Cause we're friends now. I just called him up. I said, hey, Brian, I, you know, I told him about what was going on. I needed an outlet change for, for a dryer. Was this in the house or at the job? This was at my house. Okay. So when he came over, I was telling him about, I was on dialysis and, you know, we were just talking and catching up. So he was working in my electrical box and he was like, well, what's going on with the kidney situation? And I, and I had told him, I said, my daughter wanted to be like my um, youngest daughter wanted to be a donor because me and her are the same blood type. And, um, but they wouldn't let her because they said she's too young. And because of diabetes and all these things that run in our family, it may come a point in time where she may need a transplant or need a kidney or whatever. Right. So they said, she's off the table. So I told him that, right? So he says, well, what's your blood type? And I said, O negative, which is a rare blood type, right? So he looks at me, he stops what he's doing. We're in the basement. He just sits back and says, what's your blood type? And I said, O negative. He said, wow, my blood type is O negative, right? And I didn't say nothing. I didn't get my hopes all up or anything. And I just didn't say nothing else to him about it. Right, right. That, that was the end of that conversation. And right. then a couple months later, um, things started moving forward for me. Like the uh, surgeon wanted to meet me. And, you know, I was like, wow, OK, things are rolling along. Right. So when I went to the surgeon now, my doctor told me, he said, Larry, he came up to me one day. He said, Larry, listen. <laughs> while I was in my chair because they would come around to your chair and visit you so this one particular day I'm taking dialysis and he comes around he says Larry listen he says if a kidney came today or tomorrow you wouldn't be ready he said you need to at least lose 25 20 to 25 pounds to be ready for this kidney right yeah. and so this is after the gastric bypass where where's though I had gained the weight right, so right. So I just got serious about it. I started exercising. I started eating better. I started walking and I lost 40 pounds. Praise so, God. Now I understand that on dialysis, uh, the men and women get so weak. Yeah, yeah. So how, how did that work for you? How it worked for me, I just prayed to God for strength. You know, the Lord said, you know, his strength is made perfect in our weakness. And when we're weak, he's strong. I could yes. do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And yes. so I went to God like that. Like, I need your strength. I need your strength. I need your help. I want this kidney and I'm and I'm and and I'm willing to do what I have to do to lose this weight on my own and keep it off. 
And guess what? I still kept it off. When I went back to that doctor just recently, I only gained a pound since my surgery. And my surgery was January the 19th. Uh, I mean, for the kidney surgery, right? I don't want to get people confused. So the kidney right. surgery was this January that just passed on the 19th. So, so hold, hold on for one second, Larry. Huh? Hold on. What happened? <laughs> See, and how long are we on so far? 20 minutes. 30 minutes? Okay, so this, it just went off at 30 minutes. You whispering to us. Is he at the door? Is someone at the door? So we're, we're, we're on hold? Okay. Can we talk? Yeah. Okay. Can we talk? No. Thank you, G. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every way. Every way. Okay. Hold, hold on for a second, uh, Larry. Hold on. You hear yes. me? Yes. Yeah. Hold on. Uh, she got to take her potty break. I hope I'm not on. <laughs> Amen. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. 